What's up, guys? We're back here at the GSL Code S. Um, we have had a few problems here today. The mouse for innovation is not working. Yeah, it's not working at all, so uh, I think he's getting a new one. Yeah. We, oh, okay, we just got confirmation of this in our ears, but we were talking about this on break. We thought we saw this. Uh, we saw the coach on the phone yeah. uh, frantically calling somebody, and they're having somebody run and buy a mouse. Yeah, getting a mouse uh, sent here from their team mouse or something. Yeah. So, um, so, I mean, we're still going to have to start the game. He might have to use the mouse we've, we've let him use for now for this next game, but they're trying to get a mouse over here ASAP. Now, we got some great events going on here. As we were talking about earlier, we're giving away tickets for Dracula Untold here at the studio. Yeah, if you win, you get two tickets, so you can bring a date or a friend. And uh, we've got, of course, this online event where if you go on the Facebook page, you can say, I love the GSL because blank, and uh, tell why you love the GSL. Yeah, definitely participate in that. And, of course, if you come down to our studio, uh, make a sign. If you are put on camera, you can get a GSL coin. You get one coin anyways just for showing up here yeah. at the studio. We have all sorts of prize giveaways for that as well. Yep, so you get up the three coins there. And you can exchange coins, as you can see here. And uh, if you're actually not going to you know, be staying in Korea, you want to give your coins away because you can't use them, you can actually donate them to a pot, and then maybe someone else who comes behind you might actually get your coins if you want to do a nice thing. And uh, you can see there's uh, prizes for who can collect the most coins. Yeah. This is kind of like Mario. Yeah, basically. You want to, get all, you want to unlock all the coins here. It's better than getting an extra life, though. You might win a graphics card some other prizes down there. So, so definitely come down and check that out. Uh, we'll be starting game number three here shortly. Yeah. Um, uh, hopefully he gets his mouse Do you know where the SK up. Telecom Tea House is? Uh, I want to say it's it's near Kangnam, actually. That's what I, I thought, I don't too. Know exactly where. So theoretically, they could get that very quickly. That's right in the neighborhood that we're in here. Okay, yeah. so they're not buying one. They're having it brought from the team I mouse. I think that so, what's going yeah. On? I think that's what's going on. I guess that would make more sense. Maybe the whole team has a standard mouse that they use. I really don't know. Um, SKT is a very, like, uh, their team is, like, I don't want to say it's rigid, but they, they are just a very... Uh, They're very uniform. Yeah, very uniform, practices. very, you know, very well practiced. So I would imagine there's probably, like, things in place for when this happens, you know. They might have, like, a bunch of extra mice for when people have mice just poop out on them when they're practicing or whatever, so... Um, well, I gotta, I gotta imagine for a second what innovation feels right now, and this is probably one of the worst feelings in a tournament. When your gear is not working. Yeah. It's That's terrible. That's really scary. It's such a high-stakes match like this, especially because he wants to prove himself, you know, to his new team today. Uh, to just, yeah. you know, sit in the booth and be like, yeah, I'm on SKT now, and I'm, I'm going to be in the finals, well, along with our other SKT let's, finalists. Let's say he um, yeah, he loses here today. That's an awful feeling as well. Yeah, did, did it hurt his momentum when that mouse problem came up? Yeah. Also, he knows that, uh, you know, people are down here. They're waiting. Everybody's showed up to see these games. People bringing flowers, you know. People bringing flowers. Those might work better than the mouse he was using in that last game. That was pretty <laughs> poor. Yeah, maybe so. No? Uh, so are we just going to start? I uh, think next game? so. The lobby is hosted right now. You guys got Zergling right. plushie. Wrong race for today. Yeah, that's Sue actually right there <laughs> watching the games. Could be, man. We Tom can't hanging see the out. He's eager to eat whichever nerd gets into the finals. Well, uh, I believe we are going to go into this game three. I don't know if he has his mouse yet or not, or if he's we're just gonna he's gonna have to play with a backup mouse for now. Yeah, uh, it's possible if, if this mouse doesn't get here in the next minute, they're probably gonna force him to use the backup mouse for the next game. The innovation of innovation, innovation support here. I'm pretty sure innovation probably the fan favorite here. Although, you know, after you've seen Cure play at Battlegrounds, you've got to be thinking. This guy's a new up-and-coming Terran. We need some new up-and-coming Terrans, by the way. Yeah, we definitely do. Uh, it's it's that time, you know, where a race is struggling and, and certain heroes emerge. Both yeah. of these guys are trying to be that hero, be that Terran finalist. And it looks like he's setting up something new. 
over there. He's working on something. So well, the, the fact that he does not have um, his headset on, though, makes me think we actually have a little bit of time here. Yeah. So one of our Korean casters, Damon there, he was on Hanbit Stars, uh, an old picture there. Some old uh, StarCraft 1 super old history there. In that yeah, game. old school. So we still need a little bit more time before uh, we get that mouse. Well, I'm happy he gets plugged in. He gets this issue resolved. You know he's going to play with well, his gear. It's better, I think, for the games. Better for everybody watching. Better for him if we do this, right? Versus make him play with a mouse. What, whatever really else his. mouse we we have on backup here. Yeah. Uh, so rarely does this ever happen uh, at a GSL. Uh, one of the main reasons for that is that the players show up early, um, and this is an advantage that GSL has over. Basically, all the, all the, all other tournaments yeah. is that it's a TV show. So the players get here early. They get their makeup and their hair done um, backstage. Then they go to the PC. They plug in all their stuff. Uh, if you guys could see behind me, each player actually gets its it, yeah. an individual booth. So we never right. swap them out, which means that player has all his gear set up, ready to go. Yeah, very early on. And that's fact, why we get the games uh, out so quickly. Yeah. So this. Basically never happens here. Yeah, some players even will sit in the booth and play a ladder game or play a custom game just to make yeah. sure everything's working perfectly. Uh, you know, if they have enough time, they may even what, play what, two What's or three. weird, too, is uh, his mouse crapped out on him in the second game. Yeah. so That's really strange. That's Yeah, that's weird. Um, that's I'm, weird I'm not suggesting foul play or anything. I'm just saying that this never normally happens. So uh, hopefully they get that other mouse in here uh, soon. Yeah, the only person who's probably like really, really frustrated right now is Cure because he's like in the zone. You know, he's he's coming off of a win, and yeah. now he's gonna sit back and wait. I mean, you you have that energy with you after you win that first game. Yeah, you've got the adrenaline. And he crushed him. Yeah. Um, in that game. That well, they innovation. Just let's be frank. He didn't even know that it was a CC first, and so he played really safe. And that's what's gonna happen. Yeah. You're gonna get behind economically, like massively so, in a mirror matchup. If somebody goes CC first, you can't punish them uh, because you don't know. And then he builds a force that's you know a little bit more mobile than yours. Your drops don't really do damage, and uh, Cure played a pretty textbook game there. It's unfortunate that Innovation's game was also like you know littered with these mouse problems. Uh, that yeah, two help. pauses in a game, and they were pauses at pretty important moments. Right. Um, right in the middle of battles. So uh, the other thing that sucks for Innovation is, <laughs> I mean, there's no pauses really left for him. Yeah. Right now, I, 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 I wonder what actually happened. I mean, this this is eventually going to happen. Someone's gear is going to break down. Yeah. It just it happens, you know, so, so rarely. But it happens right after he joins SK Telecom. Um, and he's in his debut match in the semifinals of the biggest individual league in the world. Um, that sucks, man. That's It's, it's got to so be this weird fe from, you know, feeling. From uh, what we've seen so far, who do you think is going to come out on top? I think Innovation will still. Uh, mouse problems, you know, even if you remove those, that, that second game was a game that was almost like a build order win in a way because he went to scout and he just couldn't get up there and see the CC and he just gave up on the scout and just played safe. He was like, you know what, I'm going to play safe. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to make a Raven instead of a, a Banshee off of a gas first. Was so like economy already took a small hit from going for that gas first and rushed out a Raven, uh, which didn't help him at all. Um, so I, I don't feel like that loss is really as indicative of the skill. <laughs> Here's uh, Gisado, one of our Korean commentators, being funny. Justifiable, that's what that shirt says. Um, so, for me, I look at this and I still got a good feeling for Cure, and that's in part because of this pause here for innovation. Yeah, I think he's got a good shot. I thought Cure really did outmaneuver him on the map. I don't know. I. It's hard to say because I don't want to psychoanalyze the players too much. Right. And part of this is our job to try to talk about the games, but I don't want to read too deep into it, but. Cure does have a very uh, good start from here. Innovation probably very tilted, probably, frankly, a little bit stressed in that yeah, booth. Yeah, mean, frustrated. The, the show has been held up a little bit. And going Can back you, to that last game, I mean, even one game in a, in a best of seven when you have two people this good. Thousands of people are watching. There's a ton of people in the studio. Can you even imagine the feeling when you have to type PP again the second yeah. time? Like, Can you even imagine like even having the courage to type PP and just be like... Uh, guys, I swear, like, I'm not doing this on purpose. You know, this just, just keeps happening. I, you know, it's funny. Uh, the PP rule was um, put into, I guess, StarCraft 1. I'm trying to remember when exactly that was the rule. Because That's a long time initially, um, they, they don't, there were problems where people would need to pause, but type in, like, can I pause? 
Yeah. Or my my mouse is not working and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, let's say a rep doesn't get in there or they don't pause the game in time or something. And then we have a whole other problem. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the PP rule was put in there. I think that's etiquette everywhere, though, now. Yeah, pretty in much. In RTS games online. Yeah. Uh, even when I play with Westerners, just PP uh, for pause. Yeah, it's but, just uh, the easiest, most understandable thing because chatting is not allowed. So, you know, just yeah. PP is just something you could type in. Well, plus, um, you know, there would be situations where someone might type in something that would probably give away right. um, what they were doing. Just sure. subtle things like, oh, at this, at this phase, he's saying his mouse is skipping. Well, what is he like? Is he about to drop me right now? Yeah. Or did he notice that, you know, there's a bunch of very subtle tells. So, um, yeah. And that's, that's something that's true as well. <laughs> Cure is, uh, you know, just in the dark during all of this, you know, yeah. not knowing everything that's going on because he can't be told exactly the scenario because then he could have more information about the game that's going on, you know. Um, I'm sure at this moment he now knows by now that it's a mouse problem, but, you know, in a game like that, it's just pause or some equipment problem. He doesn't know exactly what's going on because yeah. you know, it might give him some well, information about the game. people get pretty pissed when you pause in a in an important match. Twice. Twice, yeah. And that's why I got to feel innovation going to be feeling really awkward right now uh, getting into this, having to pause twice. That I'm happens to you this. online. You're probably playing against me. <laughs> I probably tabbed out for a second and loaded up a different song on YouTube because I'm that I'm that douchebag <laughs> on the internet. It's okay. By the time he's unpaused, my song's already playing. I didn't miss much. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, we got some time to kill Wolf. I don't know how long this is going to take. I don't. I really don't know. Either. I don't know. Um, I'm trying to trying to ask. I mean, do you have any uh, other crazy stories about bringing slugs in the house? Anything like that? You ever do anything? You know, give me a category and, I, and I'll see if I have a story. Um, you ever like? I'm like practicing being a grandpa right now. You ever like, uh, you know, like steal something as a kid, like out of someone's desk or something, and get caught later? No, never. I was a perfect child, actually. I never. No, let me think. Did I, did I ever steal anything? No, you ever do any like really silly bad things as a kid? Like, you ever like start a food fight or anything? Like when you were like one in time. School? Well, okay, here, here's an example of uh, of my brother and me, uh, Sean and me. My mom went out of town. I, where, where did she go? I think it was somewhere in Europe for work. And so we're, we're nerds, right? So we didn't actually have like a party party, but we had a LAN party, and we had dudes flying in from Texas and from <laughs> Oklahoma, and uh, it was crazy, man. We had it was just full StarCraft. Guys from Chicago coming in. We had, you know, people, people that were in the neighbor in Kansas City, we had to make them park the cars down the street. Yeah. Uh, and different rules and people could leave the house. Yeah, I was a wild child, guys. I was... Did your mom ever find out? Sort of. The neighbors kept saying there were people coming inside of that, even out of the house, and we were like, no, no, we kept denying it. And then I think eventually, I don't know, like a few years ago, I just told her it, would, it happened. I'm like, I don't know, man, I'm a grown-up. <laughs> I did that. Yeah, you guys played um, StarCraft together. So I think we're giving... Okay, we have an update. I just got told. Um, two minutes. We, he has, there's two more minutes remaining. Count it down. For that mouse to get here, and then we're going to start the game. That's got to be really tense innovation. I feel like, like we need a, a graphic right to right come now. up here on the bottom of the screen. So like the Jeopardy what? music playing or something? No, no, something more epic like the we got to diffuse the bomb music yeah. going off. Um, we, I want that timer to also have like just like the milliseconds going down so it feels like it's going very quickly. Okay, so... He has what? Probably a minute fifty now for that mouse to get in here. That, I don't see like anybody coming 20. in, or he's gonna have to use. We might as well. Refer you might to see it as the someone, potato mouse. It's just you might a see someone running behind us in a second. Oh my God! I see him. Mouse is it's coming here. in. I'm playing by playing this. He goes into the booth. It's been given to him. He's plugging it in. That was close. Whew. Head coach is there. All right. I well. love Oove. Went down the street to the hardware store, threw a brick through the window, and <laughs> took the nearest mouse he could get. Now, that's from the team house. Yeah, which is pretty nearby. I don't know exactly how nearby. I can't give you a minute's estimate, but it's, it's nearby enough to where he could get this delivered to him here down at the studio. So uh, that's really good for innovation uh, and just fans who wanted to see a good TVT because we're going to see better. Like, curses. He's like, I hate Oove. <laughs> <laughs> um, We're going to see a better series as a result of this, though, in my opinion. So I'm glad that we have this. There it is. Plugging it in. The legend. Oh, look, Mouse it's stick. live. The Terminator eyes come on. 
All right. Okay. Whoop. Check those buttons. Look at it in all of its G Series glory. <laughs> all right. We now see Cure actually has the same mouse. Yeah. It's uh, quite a popular mouse in Korea. Um, I actually once went, a P went to a PC bong where that mouse was the standard mouse in Mokdong, actually near our old studio. Oh, the olden days when we had the old Guam studio, man. Yeah, things were very different back then. Our old studio was on the second floor of a middle school. Yeah. And that is not a joke. That's people not a people joke. would actually come down to the studio. Now we're ballers. We're, in, uh, we're right by Samsung Station in Gangnam. Um, but, yeah, back then we had a little studio on the second floor of a middle school. Yeah. And uh, people would come down after watching the show for like a year or two and be in complete shock that we were somehow built into a middle school. Yeah, but you know, it's it was pretty impressive for its time. I, I really enjoyed that. So I kind of you know miss it those sometimes. Those are the good old days. I had some nostalgia. You go back and watch old VODs from that studio. This studio we got in here now is so kick-ass. Yeah, it really is. It's huge. All right, we're going to finally start this game, guys. Okay, game no number more, three. No more burning time here. No more filler. Innovation got his mouse. And we're going to go into set number three here with uh, the map Catalina. Yep, one of our larger maps. And I feel like it really suits Cure style personally of having this faster moving bio force rather than the slower innovation style. We'll see though if he can make this work again. Both first, first two games were a bit funky for these two players. And it's time. Let's get this going. Let's get the hype back up in here. Game number three, Cure against Innovation in the semifinals of the GSL Code S. In the left, in the green, he is. Yeah. g -Nair Green Wings Cure. In the upper right, in the red, with a new mouse. SK Telecom T1 Innovation. Matching mouse of his opponent. Looks like he's finally settled in. Can put out a sigh of relief. His coach got the mouse there just in time with only seconds to spare. That is intense, by the way. It really is. But a good save here. So uh, despite all the hiccups in game number two, uh, Innovation does have the same Essentially the same mouse he was uh, playing with all along. Well, Gas first here again for Innovation. Cure going to be taken. He's done that every game. Yep, all three. And Cure's going to be dropping down a Barracks first here. Looks like he's just re rallied his CC to the Gas, so we'll be taking a Gas after that. It's a little more of a conservative Gas timing here for Cure. So uh, Innovation probably going to go into a quick starport here. Yeah. See if he can get a Scout off this time. Decide to play a little more aggressive maybe. Uh, the green looks so good. Yeah, that actually looks quite good. I'm surprised we don't use the green color more often here. I almost feel like we're using the stronger team color mod or something that just got put into the, the patch because it looks really good today. It's really fancy. I noticed there's a new UI thing for drop ships now too. When a drop gets lifted up, you can see that on the mini-map. makes it really easy to catch that. I love um, all the little tweaks they're doing now to StarCraft 2. It just really makes Make it, it more spectatable. Exactly. It just makes it so much better of a spectator sport and... Uh, and this is like the esports spectator sport. Absolutely, this is the gentleman, gentleman sport. Well, it's such a great one v one sport. Uh, one of the, yeah. the best we've ever had, and in my opinion, the best still. Yeah, I agree. There, there just aren't very many one v one, you know, esport games. Uh, Hearthstone, the only one that really comes to mind. Uh, I guess Street Fighter fighting games. Yeah, Street Fighter uh, is great for uh, spectating as a, an esport one on one. Yeah. But I think StarCraft is still the best. Yeah, by I, far. I think so. But that's what makes it uh, also so good is that Blizzard keeps putting all these awesome little tweaks uh, in so that it, it's even easier to see what's happening. Yeah. Like in the old days, guys, with Brood War, there was no production tab. There was no production tab. There was, I mean, there was a lot of Brood War was actually these big surprises where the Observer just didn't know there were carriers like, hidden in the upper right side of the map. We're like, oh, my God. Yeah. He's got six carriers. We didn't even know that. So um, no, times have changed now. We did the production tab in StarCraft 2 didn't even used to have a progress bar for like a really long time. Mm, yeah. 
Okay, here comes that Reaper now. Yeah, let's see what information you get. Oh, the Marines go in the wrong direction at the worst oh. possible time. He could see everything here now. See, is that Look delayed that starport? SCB. Wow, he was super safe with that uh, Reaper. He really wanted to keep that alive so he could check in there again. And we do have the Banshee build coming out now for innovation. We also see the factory being relocated here. So there's a, a chance of the starport thrown onto that tech lab there too. Oops. What? Oh, oh no, he's just going to get a Viking instead. Okay. He saw his opponent's tech lab, I guess, and he was like, you know what? I'm just going to play safe. Innovation has done this every game so far. He's got the potential for aggression, but he always scouts, and then he's like, mm, I think I'm just going to play a little bit safer here. Yeah, it's a really well-rounded build. He's able to make all these adjustments uh, as the game moves on. And uh, we see a Raven coming out here for Cure. Wants to play a little bit safer himself. Neither of these guys really taken big risks in the early game, generally speaking. Whoa! That's not almost quite a tight wall. <laughs> yeah, almost overextended there. But he did scout the uh, exact timing of the command center there. We have a Raven now being made here for innovation. Cure's Raven is almost complete, and he also has a Widow Mine popping out. Yeah, and he's got that much faster CC. So uh, Innovation's going to try to build his CC on the low ground, which will give him a little bit faster mining. Um, well, let's see what happens here. Because Oh, ouch! Oh, damn. That hurts. Yeah. I mean, the Reaper will get its health back, but those Hellions certainly won't, and they're never going to see their friend again. So we have the uh, second command center here for Cure being started. Cure did this in uh, game number one, by the way. Now, he pushed really badly in game number one. Uh, mind you, but I thought the build for Cure overall was actually stronger than the build for Innovation. Yeah, especially, you know, economy-wise, he's definitely, he's got a safe, solid economy coming coming uh, down the pipe with this sort of build. Um, this isn't really risky, I feel, especially he's got the Widow Mine out there at the front, he's got the Raven out, it's built up a lot of energy. He's going to be pretty safe, even with that fast third CC. We see a delayed Banshee come out from Innovation, needs to be careful not to fly that into... You know, any Ravens or, or Widow Mines, for that matter. Sometimes the, the delayed Banshee is better than the quick Banshee. Yeah, it's unexpected. Yeah, well, they a lot of times just don't have defense for it. It's like a delayed DT. Uh, you know, you rush out a DT, sometimes there's a turret there. Suddenly you just drop a DT in the late game or attack yeah. a third base that doesn't have a turret. It can be quite effective. Yeah, it can be, it can be pretty strong. So we have a Stim started here for Cure. So Cure is, once again, going to be going for the bio route. Uh, going back here to innovation. Did he get a second factory? No, no so not yet, but he, he could coming up here. It looks like he might try to just do a timing attack with the Banshee because uh, he's still making Marines and Vikings. I think he's just going to try to do a lot of damage here initially with those extra Marines. He's not getting stemmed, but he's just trying to get as many units out well, as possible. He'll have to be careful if he does do an attack like this because if Cure handles it and starts to kill off the tanks, uh, Cure's going to have a pretty substantial tank lead as well as a just production lead overall. Yeah, that Banshee and is so important for this reason. I don't think Innovation is going to get a third base if it if it isn't really strong and effective here. Uh, conversely, Innovation can, if he does enough damage, actually drive him out of the uh, the second base location, and then Innovation has an easy win later on as the game moves forward. He can drop auto turrets on siege tanks. He can use a seeker missile if he's built up enough energy for that. Uh, He's he's got a really strong push coming here. It's and actually he's really, hitting it quite well. It's actually really nice to see how much more popular Ravens have become um, in TVT. Yeah, uh, because they are there's so much you can do with them. All right, okay, here, we, here go. we go. Now notice a slightly higher Viking count, but the point defense drum goes down. Yeah, for both players oh, here. Oh, but he's gonna have vision of these tanks. It looks like nicely yep. done here, and he has to scan. Now he doesn't have any SCVs of his own over there to repair. That Banshee is so important right now. He needs that Banshee to hit that tank. Yeah, I'm surprised he's not this even... This is, like, really bad. That he's Banshee not even targeting to, the tech that lab. That Banshee needs to attack that tank. Okay, uh, okay now he's there. There we go. All right, targets down that siege tank. Here come the SCVs off the line. Okay, he's he needs, dropping auto turrets. He needs all the Marines in the front here. Oh, this is really good targeting here by Innovation. And is he actually going to hold this? Looks like it, but at the cost oh, of a lot of SCVs. Those. Huh, okay. I was yeah, actually wondering he if he was going to land the Vikings. Vikings away. What this is, is get ready forgot the, about them. Get ready for the pause again. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so it felt like right there. Okay. Well, he killed uh, a lot of workers. Uh, he doesn't have a third CC, though. He has... Okay. L l l let's go back and, and look at the aftermath of this. Innovation has no tanks. Now, tanks are pretty important in this matchup. They're the, the centerpiece unit of the matchup. There's a two-tank lead right now for Kira. One tank just popped out here for Innovation. But there is a tank lead. Um, Kira did take some hits. He did lose some SCVs, though. 
The yeah. worker count right now for Innovation is 48 SCBs to 36. But if you look at the income to the top right, because of the situation in gas, the gas is pretty similar, and the mining with triple mules isn't too far down for Cure, and he's got the ability to reproduce his SCVs pretty quickly. So it hurts him for sure that he lost all those SCVs, but it's really recoverable. Um, and Innovation just needs to, to figure out what he wants to do next. He's adding a bunch of barracks rather than adding a CC, so it looks like he might want to just do a follow-up push to prevent Cure from taking oh a third man. base. If he loses this, this is so bad. Oh, he moves out. That Viking actually used to bait out that army. Only loses a Marine here. Kills an SCB for it, though, it looks like. Well, it looks like we're going to see both players go Marine tank. Yep. Um, and actually, I would say, uh, looking back at this, I think Innovation's in okay shape. I was a little bit critical early, er, but um, Cure actually didn't keep his tanks incrementing out fast enough, so... Uh, Innovations now, even with him on that, he has a slight worker lead, uh, and he's cranking out a ton of Marines. You can see nine at a time here for Innovation, five at a time right now for Cure. So big commitment to this double drop up here to the north, uh, I think partially due to the fact he can link it up with the other drop ship, and there's no turrets. He saw that. So By the way, Cure has combat shields, and Innovation does not. Wait, did the combat shields just finish? Yeah, they yes. just finished two seconds ago. They're for innovation. So, yeah, innovation is, innovation is in good shape right now. I love this drop. It synergizes really well with the drop from earlier. He knew there were no turrets, and he's got combat shields here. Let's see how much damage he gets done. Wow, takes that out, no problem. Meanwhile, another drop over here, and certainly less to defend here for Cure. He's going to take out that sensor tower. He might try to book it over there uh, to where that expansion is. Yep. Now there's two medivacs here, actually for both parties. Innovation just has a larger army in general uh, on the map, so that's why he's able to drop and defend. I didn't realize he had all those units back at his base. That drop to the top right did basically nothing, and look at the army supply, 73 to 49 right now, and he's just got rallies of units coming across the map. He added so many barracks early on. He's basically said, I don't need a third command center. Well, I just want units right now. Uh, on top of that, uh, with a... With the third base like this and Innovation seizing the map here, this is going to be very tough for Cure to break. Uh, Marine Tank against Marine Tank. If he gets a contain there... Oh, well, hold on. I was going to say if he gets a contain there on the low ground there. Oh, well, you know what, though? Innovation just has too much. Way Look too at many Marines. Range. Yeah. you got to keep your whole army together. You can see the rest of that army uh, trying to catch up. Yeah, but now he can just start picking off the medevacs one by one. They're boosting away. I think he actually can go in for a kill yep, move here. He yeah, just with no tanks, he just... He could just go siege the ramp. Yeah, and then that's that's going to be checkmate. The only army supply you see here for Cure is medevacs. <laughs> He's like healing SCVs to fight. He's got a few wow. Marines okay, under there. Okay, we're going to have GG here. That's, that's gonna it. Be it. That's definitely it. Yep. All right, nicely done there by Innovation. GG. Cure now down a game. Innovation is back. His mouse is back. Fans are squealing down there for him, man. That was a pretty impressive win there. This is... Really interesting. Okay, so he made the. I think anything that was psychologically stressing him out in from game number two with the double pause, the mouse problems, the loss itself, probably gone now as we go into game number four here. He really outplayed Cure. I feel like the critical choice he made uh, was to just add all those barracks and make a larger army and then just control the map with it. He was able to shut down the massive drop Cure went for. I liked that decision to go for that drop, but it just didn't. It didn't pay off for him because he thought the army was moving out, but it wasn't. And then he had very little to defend the drop that was, you know, attacking his own base. So Innovation gets another fair trade there. Then he's got this massive Marine lead. And that's just going to allow him to pummel that army out in the open ground. And uh, he just didn't even need a third CC, basically. He just cut that out entirely. Welcome to the studio. Going on a big trip all the oh, way down damn. to Seoul. Oh my god, oh, those are airports! Yeah. Oh, I'm getting anxiety now! Oh my god, that's so many airports! That's a lot of flying. That's a lot of flying. Oh, well, stamps on your passport. Well, uh, Cure's got to get back into this, you know? I feel like yeah. his openings, his builds have been solid, but his decision-making is just not stacked up to innovations in a lot of these games. Yeah. Like game up, uh, game one and game three especially, you know? Well, you know, innovation just looks like he's on another level. Sure. Oh, well, that's you and me, Wolf, there at our casting desk. Well, Pros are watching. <laughs> yep. They're, uh, there's no Pros left in the GSL for once. Yep, they got benched. 
That's a pretty cool drawing, like that Carbot style. Yeah, I love that. Well, well, uh, let's we see have... if he's got any other mouse issues here. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I don't know. I don't think my keyboard's working. Innovation. <laughs> he's like, I think I beat him only using my mouse. Like, yeah, my keyboard was working, so I just had to click on the attack button, <laughs> hit the ground repeatedly. Took a while, but I killed him. Okay. So, yeah, maybe that's probably the ref just verifying there's no further issues. And uh, Generic Coach comes in here. Generic Coach is a very emotional, very passionate esports guy. Coming and talking to Cure. Ah, Sweden, Sweden, Sweden for supporting Cure. Cure here. And uh, we'll see, man, if he can bring it back. I like his builds. His follow up, though, just is not as strong. Innovation, like you said, seems to be on another level. He's not able to, able to capitalize on his early third CC or on his economic lead. Innovation just is able to move out and fight him, take the win. Okay, the map is going to be Foxtrot Labs. A map that I believe in that map thing we saw earlier, neither of these players play a single game on in uh, televised matches. Well, on top of that, um, you know, the entrance to the second base is a little bit weird. I'm wondering if there's any kind of aggression you could see, like a two-base aggression, like we saw from Innovation in that last game. Yeah. Uh, I think that's certainly a possibility here on this map now. Speaking of that, imagine if he had targeted his Banshee a little bit better, like how different that could have gone, that aggression he did. Yeah, that's very true. He could have actually uh, done he could a lot more, more damage, because that Banshee was shooting the factory, and not even the add-on, as you said, uh, when it could have probably shot down the tank at that time. Anyways, guys, get ready now.